Hey Rap Bags, it's Jade back again with another Nightingale's look at development of the game and today we're going to delve into the concept art and the news that Nightingale developers Inflection have been bought out by Tencent. I'm going to be covering Nightingale in a big way. I'm hoping to make it my main game on the channel once it's released. If you want any more information about the game, go and check out the rest of the videos I've already done covering the game's development and we'll be there every step of the way till release. So starting off with something pretty cool, the concept art from two artists that work at Inflection. This was shared on Twitter, so hopefully they won't mind me going through their actual portfolio. And there's definitely some new shots here and some new stuff to talk about. But overall, some fantastic art from the pair of them. Not all of this is going to be part of Nightingale, of course. I think it's clear which parts will be since they've got big massive logos on them. But it's still interesting to see the kind of look and vibe that you can possibly get with creatures and NPCs in the future. This has all been done by Amy Cornerson, and it is absolutely fantastic. I love seeing art, I love seeing concept art and stuff like this from games. And until we get a firm concrete news info release about early access or even the alphas or betas, then yeah, stuff like this will keep me going. And they also shared a link for Steve Klitt. He's the lead concept artist at Inflection Games. Maybe not quite as new, but zoomed in, I actually noticed a few things that I hadn't actually paid attention to maybe in early, early looks. So first off, we have the Fae. These are the magical beings that don't actually, I think, like humans much since they went and created the Bound. The Bound are the creatures that you see in the trailer attacking the base or the sort of settlement. They have magic in their power and it looks like they might not be outwardly at war with us, but certainly tinkering around and laying obstacles in the form of creatures. And it does look like they maybe control a lot of the magic with the portals that will be transferring from map to map or biome to biome or world to world. We've seen this obviously in the trailer as well, the mask, and it is nice to see it confirmed as a Fae now instead of maybe just a possibly another creature or another faction. Not sure if we'll actually come into contact with these much in terms of fighting them, like I said, it feels like they're more ethereal beings, not something that will directly come up against and be trying to shoot at. But you never know, I could be wrong on that. Maybe they will be a faction that just roams around. Or we'll find these as kind of like the king bosses or the main sort of targets once you've got through some of the other creatures in the world. So humanoid in shape, but obviously some sort of horns going on unless this is all just part of the mask. And then this image as well, which I've seen a bunch of times on the cover art, and I guess I just never really delved deep into it. The fact there's two creatures on show here, something I really hadn't paid enough attention to, like this massive creature here standing on top of one of these pillars, looking like a bit of a cross between sort of baboon and an iguana. And then this guy, looking a bit friendly. Are we going to have pets in Nightingale? Does look like it is a friendly companion. It is coming out of the same direction as the rest of these. That's a cool concept that I haven't seen or heard about or explored elsewhere, but it'd be interesting to see if we do have some sort of way to have a companion or a pet creature following us around, possibly giving us some sort of bonuses or buffs. These are obviously the portals and we know more and more now that we're going to be activating these to transfer obviously to other places, but there will be certain resources they need, requirements for that to happen. So you'll be spending time on each map, each zone, each biome, collecting stuff, before using the portals, the stuff you've gathered, to travel to another realm, which is obviously their proper name. And then we get a bit more of a close-up on Nightingale, the city. This is like the objective of the game, but maybe not, or maybe just sort of a, a NPC place where we can possibly get quests, dig a little bit more into the story. The whole trailer, the whole part of the game being explained so far is that we are basically lost in realms, and we're jumping from realm to realm to hopefully make it back to Nightingale, the hub city. But from what I remember reading into, it does look like there will be some chance to explore this zone and area, and hopefully it's not going to be just there for the trailer at the end of the game or something. Hugely inspired by like London Victorian and industrial era, that is like a dead shoehorn in for me for something like St Paul's Cathedral, with many, many similar architecture features in the buildings around it. And then obviously we've got the bit more fantastical, the gas lamp influence. Are these what power the realms, the gates that go throughout the galaxy, I guess? And then in far distance, you do notice them funnels, that industrialness of it as well, looking very much like old oil coal factories in the background. Or where I grew up in South London, salt and vinegar factories. It's cool, cool stuff. I will leave the links in the comment section. You can go and check it out if yourself from Steve Clitt. And of course, Amy Cornerson as well, the concept designer artist. 
With her stuff, we do get a bit more refined. With her stuff, we obviously get extra concepts of what some of the characters or NPCs will look like. Different style guns, it's all pretty cool. And this one, I've got to say, I like the concept art for this. I think more than I've seen it in the trailer, this does look just even more human-like with the hair. I'm not sure if it's lost that a little bit in the trailers we've seen or the footage we've seen already. This is the harpy creature that I've explained in a previous video only a little few days ago. So go and check it out if you want to know more information about some of the creatures that got shown off with an interview with IGN. And that face you certainly maybe didn't want to kiss anyway is certainly something even worse now. But here you can see the models and stuff without the hair and stuff. So it looks great. And the various different concepts they went through. I guess at one stage they were toying with it maybe not looking as human. Maybe something a bit more traditional that I think a lot of people would associate a harpy with looking like a vulture-like creature. But I love the idea that it is now a much more humanoid creature, or in its face at least anyway, or part of it. How whole idea is to disguise itself as it's going through the shadows of swamps, or possibly raiding you and taking your loot and goods secretly and hoping not to be spotted too far in the cold or dark. And then we get a little bit of a close look at the bound. So these are the creatures that have kind of been made by the Fae, apparently in mimicry of humans. Each will have different weapons, there'll be different types, and they're just one of the factions that we'll be encountering in the game. I've often coined and said that a lot of these influences seem a bit like maybe some creatures in early Silent Hill games, especially the one with the massive wheel around his head. But they are absolutely fantastic looking. These are grunts that are going to be basically trying to destroy your bases maybe on a more regular basis. And here's the guy with the actual wheel on his head. Absolutely great stuff. And again, you can see the iterations from very rough weapons and maybe possible looks. And you can see the size of them as well. Maybe they've made them a little bit smaller, I don't know. But compared to the average human, they're nearly twice as high. And then the giants again, which we've seen a lot of in the trailers, and I've shown this bit of footage off before, or this piece of art. They put this in a email that they sent to everyone that signed up to the newsletter recently. But again, just another great image of the actual giant. But something else again I didn't notice was the sort of dead keychains of creatures. Maybe it's just for snacking purposes. I'll just reach down and get a deer or a wolf. And then we are the realm walkers. It's nice to see bright and colour in the game like this as well. It's not going to be just darky, murky and grey. Something a bit more vibrant too. So good, good stuff. Go and check them out. Now let's get on to that Tencent news. So yes, Tencent, the company that has bought more games than you can shake a whistle at. But basically, Tencent own a portion of every game that you play, more or less. They have minority shares in Activision, Ubisoft, and a bunch of others, and of course, have been outright buying massive companies as well. Now, before some angry gamer starts clambering on that keyboard and say, oh no, this is terrible. To be fair, it's been so far shown that it's not. It's actually good news. Unlike a lot of big AAA publishers that tend to meddle a lot, Tencent seem pretty keen to just be the money men and let you do what you do. Hopefully resulting in a better quality product rather than something rushed out. They have actually invested in a bunch of games that have pretty much come good or certainly have ambitious plans that look like they will come to fruition. One I've got some experience covering was their acquisition of Funcom and Conan Exiles developers makers. Basically, they bought them out completely and yeah, things seem to be going okay. They have had a few delays on their main game, Conan Exiles, over the last two years, but a lot of that has been attributed to not having a good enough system to cope with COVID. Seems like they had just outsource management for a lot of their QA as well as possibly port jobs for consoles. But they have also now bought their own studios and directly underneath them now to work on that side of things too. And it was reported that development on June, their upcoming open world survival game, very much similar to Conan Exiles, has increased massively by about 10 times the amount in terms of investment scope. Hence why we've not seen or heard anything about that, even though it was mentioned nearly three years ago now. So no rushing. Here's the money, go and do what you gotta do. Of course, we want a significant return on investment, but it looked like to be scattergun approach, invest in lots and hopefully build up some sort of portfolio and trust in your developers actually delivering a decent game. Which has gotta be better than being Activision, Little Bitches, or some other big, huge publisher coming up behind you and basically forcing you to go through crunch, hit deadlines, and release buggy, broken, unfinished content. Given that Aaron Flynn was one of the developers working on Anthem and a bunch of other games in the past for EA, and it certainly looks like they were pressurized and forced into releasing that way too early, I can't imagine anyone at Inflection wants that to happen again. 
So what also was cleared up was the confusion around is this improbable with a name change? Is it a side studio, a satellite studio? Because years ago, Aaron Flynn had a big announcement that yes, he was making a game with improbable and it was gonna be a big MMO. Now that's scaled down, it's not an MMO anymore. They're not using the spatial software or engineering or technology to basically deliver cloud gaming on a massive scale. It's gonna be much more co-op focused, single player focus. So they originally set out to do this together, but it looks like Improbable don't want to be in the game development kind of market anymore, not first party. They're going to be licensing their technology to other game developers to basically just go ahead and use it. So according to all the reports, they've actually actively helped Inflection find a buyer to help them carry on with this game so it doesn't just get something that gets cancelled or shunted off. So it seems like a happy conclusion for everyone. Improbable can go about their business of being a cloud seller of technology or whatever. Inflection can go ahead and carry on making the game they want to make and Tencent will give them the money to do so. Apparently it had nothing to do with Tencent, this change in scope of the game from being an MMO to something a little bit more cult focused. So there we go. I mean, Inflection aren't a small studio. I keep treating them a little bit like indie, expecting, you know, some stuff to be shown a lot more. But they've got over 100 developers. This is like a mid-tier sized development studio. Well, I guess small to medium, I would say. You know, anywhere over 300, you're looking at bigger studios. And then the biggest ones, obviously, like Ubisoft, have like thousands. But yeah, hopefully we're going to get news about the alpha soon and I'll be there every step of the way. I can't express how close I am to this game. I want to get on it every bit of news, any kind of info about release and hopefully get my hands on it as soon as possible. I want a game that I can just main for a long time now. I'm sick of covering every game under the sun. I just haven't found one that has really got give me that confidence to do so. But this might be it. PvE, co-op, single player setting is fantastic base building the setting and everything else around it i said setting twice there i liked it so much yeah i really am gonna hopefully do my best to make this a big point on my channel dangerous i know we don't know if the game will actually be any good but i've got a good feeling about nightingale so yeah i'll be there to deliver all the news you need to know so until next time i'll see you rat bags later